Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 42 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, Take a look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if you are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 41. Now, you remember in lesson number 41, we hooked up the MPU 6050 and we were able to make acceleration measurements on the X axis, the Y axis and the Z axis. OK, so we got the chip plugged in. We got it working. We got everything put together. But one of the things that we noticed is the reported readings seem to depend on orientation. So as we started tilting our board, we started seeing changes in the readings that we were getting from our accelerometers. And so what your homework assignment was to go in and quantitatively calculate the actual tilt based on that data that was coming from the accelerometer. How many of you guys were successful? If you were, leave a comment down below. I am legend double chest bump. Or if you were not successful, leave a comment down below. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. OK, hopefully most of you guys were able to do it, but probably I've noticed a lot of you guys. What you do is you just run out and try to find a library or you run out and you try to find somebody who has done it and like grab the code like you do it by scouring the Internet and finding the little pieces you need to come up with a solution. What I hope is, I hope some of you guys actually figured it out for yourself because a couple of weeks ago, what did I do? I gave you two lessons on trigonometry, practical trigonometry, trigonometry that was easy to understand. Then I did a couple of lessons of hooking up and using the MPU 6050. Now, between those four lessons, I gave you everything that you needed in order to figure this problem out. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to not run out and find someone else's library, but how to think through the problem and then come up with a solution. So even if you didn't do this on your own, at least watch me do it and then understand how to think through a problem like this. OK, hopefully that sounds good. Let's come over here and we need to kind of make sure that we've got things hooked up. <clears throat> so I will get out of your way. You need to go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and you need to look for this happy little search tool and you need to search on something like schematic for a tilt meter and you'll come to this page. First of all, you've got the schematic of how to hook this thing up. Today we're only using the MPU 6050, but go ahead and hook up your uh, 1306 OLED because we will be using that in future lessons. So just get your circuit built out. Most of you guys probably already do. And this was that very simple code for just making measurements off of the uh, making measurements off of the device. So let's go ahead and snag that code so we don't have to rewrite everything from scratch. And then we're going to come over here to Thonny and we're going to paste that code in uh, at the point that I made that we were using the round function to try to have fewer significant figures. So it's not like acceleration of 1.076432895, way too much resolution. But I found that in MicroPython that round function behaved unpredictably and actually delivered some confusing results. So we're not going to try to round our number off because that didn't work very well. The other thing is we want to go ahead and make our measurement in the Z axis as well. So we'll say Z 
accelerometer is equal to MPU, our object dot acceleration, our function dot C, what we want to actually report. And then we're going to come in and print that out as well here. So we'll put a comma <clears throat> and then we'll give it the label Z and then we'll give it the value which was uh, which was Z acceleration Z acceleration like that and then we'll go ahead and give it the tag G for we're measuring it in G's gravitational units and so that looks pretty good now just to make sure that the universe is in proper working order let's run this and just see if it does what we would expect okay it's running no errors and boom and if you look over here what you're seeing is the x-axis and the y-axis are reading zero g's and then the z-axis the straight down axis is measuring one g why are we measuring one g in that axis well because this thing is sitting here the z accelerometer is experiencing the force of gravity the force of gravity is one g and so you're measuring that acceleration acceleration of the gravity vector and we talked about that last week so everything seems to be working and then what we were saying was <clears throat> remember that you can't see that let me switch over here okay we're switching over here and then what you can see now that's not right let's come to this one okay what you can see is as I tilt as I tilt the X, Y, and Z accelerometers are all doing magical and mysterious things. And so what your challenge is, is to take all that and turn it into actual tilt values. <clears throat> like I say, I hope some of you were able to do this, but if you weren't, I will jump in and show you how to do it. So what do we always do? We always start by drawing a picture. Okay, we always start by drawing a picture. And so let's see if I can draw something here to get us going. Okay, so now we want to look at just sort of a sketch of what's really happening when our board is tilted. So I'm going to draw kind of a tilted board here. Let's see if I come here like this. Okay, we're going to draw it tilted. And since it's tilted, I think I'll go ahead and just kind of make a triangle. All right, and then I'll come down here like this. Okay, that looks pretty good. And so let's just go ahead and say that what I've tilted the board, some angle theta. And so what your homework assignment is, is that <clears throat> what is theta? So how would we think about this? Well, the first thing that I want to think about is, I want to think about now on the board is the accelerometer, that actual plate that is feeling the g-force. So I want to draw that plate. Okay, I want to draw that plate. Something like that. Okay, that's the actual accelerometer. That's the proof mass. Now what we want to see is what are we seeing? We are looking at <clears throat> that gravitational vector. What direction does the gravitational vector point? Does it point over here? No. It points there, even like, look at my stylus, right? The gravitational vector is pointed straight down. It's not pointing at the face of the proof mass. It is pointing <clears throat> straight down. So let's come in and let's see if we can draw that. So I'll come here and I will draw that coming straight down like that. Okay. <clears throat> and what do we know? We know what the magnitude of that is. That is 1g. Okay, that is 1g. But now, does the accelerometer measure the straight down? No, it measures what's coming in perpendicular to the proof mass. So when your accelerometer is flat, the perpendicular vector is exactly the same as the gravitational vector. But as we tilt, we'll, we're now measuring this force, not this force. And this force is going to be less, okay, because this tilted is not experiencing 
the full magnitude of gravity pushing it towards the substrate. I hope that makes sense. And so what is that actually going to be experiencing? It is going to be, let's, let's now draw the vector that is perpendicular. That is the vector that we actually measure. And so let's see if I can come in here and let's see, this is kind of not real easy to draw. That's actually pretty good. Okay, so that's the perpendicular vector and I kind of messed that up, didn't I? Okay, that's the perpendicular vector. That is the vector that we're measuring when we measure the z acceleration. It's that one. It's not this one. Well, now we got to ask ourselves, how big is that one? Well, let's go ahead and kind of finish our triangle here. Okay, and I do, I do kind of want to see that. That'll. I think that'll be okay. So I do want to come in and I got to label a few things here. So, so what do I see? I see there's this angle here. And what I have to see is that angle is the same as this angle. That angle is also theta. And you can see it that if I was not tilted at all at zero, then the gravitational vector and the normal vector would be the same and the angle would be zero. And so whatever angle you tilt is also that angle on that triangle. Okay, now what is it that I really want? I want to figure out theta. But at this point, I just can't go in and say theta equals something, but I got to write down what do I know? Well, hmm, what do I have? I have a triangle. That's good. I see that this is, this is a very poor attempt at making that a right angle, but I can see that that is a right angle. Okay, and this long leg is what? This long leg is 1g, and on a triangle, that is the what? That is the hypotenuse, and that is 1g. Okay, and if this is the angle, then what is this side? This side is the side that is adjacent, adjacent to our angle, and this side is the side that's what? opposite our angle. Well, what do I know? I know the hypotenuse. What else do I know? I know the adjacent because that's what I'm measuring. That normal vector is what I'm measuring coming off of the z-axis accelerometer. And so I know those two things. Hmm, could I write an equation? Well, how about this that we learned in that second trig? That second trig. Well, it's the cosine that uses the adjacent angle. And so what I could say is, I could say the cosine of that angle is equal to the what? The adjacent side divided by <clears throat> the hypotenuse. Okay, now what do I know? I know that cosine of theta is equal to what is that adjacent side? That is that z-axis acceleration. It's the z accelerometer, and it is the normal vector that is coming in. So this is the, uh, what did we call this? We called that the z acceleration, and then divided by what? Divided by the hypotenuse, and that is what? That's 1, 1g, one right? We can measure it, or we can think about it, it's 1g. And so that is like that. So now I have one equation and one unknown. I want to solve for the unknown, which is theta. Well, how do I do that? I take the arc cosine of both sides. And so the arc cosine of cosine, it undoes the cosine. So I'm just left with theta. And then that is going to be equal to the arc cosine of z acceleration divided by 1 is just what? z acceleration, okay? And now what I could say is we, that's going to be in radians, so to get it to degrees, theta degrees is equal to theta in radians divided by 2 pi, that's the fraction of the circle I've gone around, times the full circle in degrees, which is 360, and then when I do that, I will have the what? I will have the tilt angle, okay? Is this just, was this just, did, I mean, 
didn't I show you? I mean, even in that second lesson, didn't I even draw something almost exactly like this for you? Okay, I hope some of you got it. You guys, leave, right at this point, pause the video and leave some comments about, was this just a dirty trick and I didn't show you enough to work this, or did I give you enough in those lessons to work this? Okay, I think I gave you enough to work it, but I guess we should ask ourselves, does it really work? So keep those two, two equations ready, and then let's come back over here to our code view. I think I'll just go to the pure code view for right now. Okay, <clears throat> so now I no longer want to print. Okay, I no longer want to print that. But what I want to do is I want to calculate <clears throat> theta. And theta, we said, was up. We better import our math library. <clears throat> import math. Okay, and now let's calculate theta. Theta is equal to math dot arc cosine. I'm sure I so showed you how to do that in that second trig lesson of what? Z acceleration, like that. All right, Z acceleration. Now, I could just run in and do it, but let's go ahead and convert it to theta degrees. And what was that? That was theta divided by 2 divided by math.pi <clears throat> times 360. Now, I could at this point just go in and run it. I could just go in and run it. <clears throat> but what I want you to see is, remember when we're looking at these things, there's a little bit of noise, and look at that Z. Look at that Z value there, and you see it's a little bit more than one, where it can't be more than one, and so that's just a little measurement noise. But if you try to do an arc cosine of a number greater than one, the program will crash because cosine goes between one and negative one. So if you try to do the arc cosine of 1.000001, it's gonna crash. And so what we need to do is just make sure if it's a little more than one, just make it one. And that way our program won't crash. So we're gonna say if <clears throat> Z acceleration is greater than one, then make Z acceleration equal to one like that and then our program shouldn't crash all right then what we probably want to do is we probably want to go ahead and say print and then we are going to say tilt angle space and then what they i'll have to move this i see i did this in the wrong place theta <clears throat> degrees and then we'll give it the label degrees like that Okay, but that needs to be after we do the calculation. So I'll cut it. I'll come down here and I'll put it here. Like that. Okay, let's stop it. <clears throat> Better take a sip of coffee. I will need everyone to hold their breath. What should I see at this point? <clears throat> what should I see at this point? It should be reading very, very, very close to zero degrees. It should be reading very, very, very close to zero degrees. Everyone hold their breath. Oh, denied. No. Oh, oh, oh. What did I do? Math taught not py pi is in that pi. Wrong pi. Okay. The real problem is one of you guys didn't hold your breath. I... I think you know who you are, so this time please join the rest of us and hold your breath. Ah, look at that. Boom. What is it reading? Tilt angle of zero. So we're feeling pretty good. We're feeling pretty good, but now will it measure tilt? Well, let's come in. Let me see if I can give it about a 20 degree. Okay, I'm coming in at about 20 degrees, and then i got to hold it real still. And look at that. It's measuring 20. 45 is pretty easy to estimate, and so let's come in to about a 45 degree angle, and I'm measuring 45 degrees. Okay, look at that. Do you see, watch the graph. Let me get out of your way a little further. Okay, you see, watch the graph as I tilt, you see? And it's measuring in degrees. Boom, is that pretty cool or not? Is that pretty cool or not? I love this. Do you love this? Okay, I hope you love it too, that we did, we learned some trigonometry, 
we learned some engineering, and we solved a real-world practical problem, and now we have something that measures tilt or incline. Okay, we have something that measures tilt or incline. Okay, let me see something. Yep, there it goes. That's actually pretty darn good. I'm just trying to eyeball it in. <clears throat> as close as I can eyeball it, that is really uh, that is really looking uh, that is really looking good. Okay. Now, this is what I love about it. We went through the math, we went through the physics, we went through the engineering, and we actually have a practical device now. What do I not like about it? Okay, what I want you to see is if I put it nose down, it reads what? It reads a positive angle. What if I put it nose up? It reads a positive angle. What if I roll it towards me? It measures roll. Okay, that's a 45 degree angle there. That's good. Okay, but it's positive. And if I do this, so it is measuring tilt, but it's measuring any and all tilt. And it's measuring any and all tilt. Okay, any and all tilt is just tilt. All right, so this is what I want you to see. Really, it doesn't matter what's positive and what's negative, but if this is positive, then this needs to be negative. Or if this is negative, this needs to be positive. So you would see what direction are you tilting. And we don't have that based on our existing solution. And what you have to see is there's two distinct axes of tilt. There is this, we'll call this the nose of the airplane. This is pitch, nose up, nose down. This is roll, roll to the left, roll to the right. And all four of those things are just being reported the same, just a positive <clears throat> angle. Now that angle is accurate, but what do we really want? We want to be able to measure pitch, and we want to be able to measure row. Homework for next week is to take what I showed you today and now go in and do a little bit more math where you are reporting pitch and roll, and they have signs like, say this would be negative pitch, positive pitch, negative roll, positive roll. I don't care which is which, but just that they're different if they're going in different directions. Okay, now you've got everything you need to do it. Okay, you've got everything you need to do it. And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Uh, have you used all of the data that you have coming in? Have you used all the data that you have to get where we are now? Okay. Now I know what your I know what your inclination is. A lot of you, what your inclination is going to be, what you're going to do is, or what your intuition is going to tell you to do, you're going to come over here and, and you're going to, you see, you're going to jump to the data rather than jumping to the math. All right. And so I'm going to turn the print, I'm going to turn the print off on the degrees and I'm just going to go back to the raw data. And what you're going to do is you're going to say, oh, wow, look at this. I've got all this, I've got all this different data here coming in off of the three accelerometers. And so you're going to want to jump in and start doing some if statements and if this, if that, then this, then that, a bunch of stuff trying to look at. You're going to be looking at the data as you are rotating and then you're going to come up with some wild and crazy insane scheme to then try to do the homework. Okay, I'm going to give you a hint. Don't start there. Start with this picture. Okay, start with this picture. You might even ask yourself, you might even ask yourself, hmm, maybe I should think a little bit more about that vector there, right? I've got the gravitational vector. I've got the vector normal to the z-axis accelerometer. Is there anything special about this vector? 
okay? That's a little bit of a hint. Okay, guys, give me some feedback. Is this the type of thing you guys like to do? Are you guys that just like to get a library that does it and just you want to write a line of code and you want to get an answer and you want to go through life doing projects where you use someone else's library and then you make something work? And there's people like that and that's okay, but man, I think it's exciting where I solve the problem and I learn how to think and analyze and think like an engineer. You guys tell me enough of that. I just want the answer. Are you enjoy going through these problems that are sometimes mind bending problems? Okay. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad if you didn't figure it out. But if after you watched it, now you understood what I was doing and how you should have been doing it, that's success too. And so even if you fail miserably, try as hard as you can on this homework I just gave you. <clears throat> but if you fail miserably, know I'll be showing you the solution next week. Okay. Now I'll say one other thing. There's two ways you can do this. The really hard way that it's going to be so hard it becomes impossible and you're going to end up with this bloated, impossibly complex code, <clears throat> or you're going to do it with one line of code. Like, you know, you're, you're going to take what we've done here and you're going to change one or two or three lines of code and then you're going to have it do all the things that I want it to do. So there's the trivially simple way to do it and then there's the impossible way to do it. The impossible way to do it is to look at this data and try to predict trends and figure out who's where and what's doing what and try to write a lot of if statements. Or you can go back to our friend, the math, the trigonometry, and you can very, very simply think through it and come up with a solution. Okay, guys, <clears throat> man, I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I, I am making them. I love these accelerometers and, and we're going to have some real fun with this. We're going to keep doing things with this, uh, with this chip because there's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. But rather than just giving you a library and having you go right to the solution, I want you to kind of think through things. And I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Also, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. I know I've been saying this but in the last few lessons, but I got to tell you, you Patreon guys are the guys that are keeping this content coming. You guys that are standing with me and helping on Patreon, that is what's keeping me in the game. Because again, I think YouTube has decided they don't want in-depth, long, content-rich material they want to get a person because, you know, when they watch those shorts, a person watches a 15 second short and then they watch the next one and the next one and the next one. And then they're just sort of captured in this zombified state where they just sit there watching YouTube continuously. It's almost like a <clears throat> like like some form of addiction and this real learning content, this real educational content. I, that's the old way of doing it. So you guys on Patreon, you're keeping me in the game. Also, you can help me by giving me a thumbs up. You help by leaving a comment down below, subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, share these videos with other people because the world needs more people doing coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.